Most amateur golfers do not know how to use their wrists in the golf swing. So your wrists are a big part of releasing the club, creating club head speed and squaring the club face up. So if you don't know how to do that, then you're leaving stuff on the table and these are fairly easy wins. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the three different ways the wrists move in the golf swing and how they affect the golf ball. If I can just ask you quickly to like and subscribe this video, it really helps YouTube push this to more people and it helps me grow. So anything you can do to help, that'd be great. Right, let's get to it. It's quite hard to look at golf as anything other than a hand and arm sport. Now there's a lot of chatter in the, like, the modern coaching about ground reaction forces, pressure shifts and all that sort of stuff. But ultimately, if your hands and wrists aren't working properly, then you're never gonna be able to release the club through the shot, hit it straight or hit it with any speed. The evidence of this is those handicapped golfers who don't have use of their legs and they're actually strapped into a chair and those guys can hit it 300 yards without using their legs at all and you can't tell me that that's anything other than using their hands and arms and wrists to throw the club as fast as possible and generate that speed so if you as an amateur player who slices it or maybe doesn't hit it very far improves your wrist action throughout the swing then i think we're going to definitely help hit the ball further so the wrists have three different functions in the golf swing so they have wrist cock which is just me going thumbs up to thumbs down they have wrist extension and wrist flexion, which is me like wagging the club head, almost like a fishing rod or wagging the dog wagging the tail sort of action. And then there's rotation, which is me twisting the club open to shut throughout the swing. Now, every single golf swing has an element of those three things, but what's important is you have the right amount of the three individual things for your golf swing. The general fault of an amateur golfer is too much wrist cock where the club just works upwards and not enough flexion and extension. So extension of the trail wrist and flexion of the lead wrist. The, what happens when you just cock your wrists up and down is the club face just opens. So you can see if I cock my wrists up, keep my wrist in the same place and go to the top of my swing, you can see that I've got a cup lead wrist. I don't have any extension in my trail wrist and the club face is open. Now this could have happened because we spent a lot of time hitting balls where we cock the club up in front of us, we turn and then we hit it. And actually if you just do that, then you're gonna miss out on the wrist extension, which is ultimately what gives us the square face and the power. So we need to understand that. On the PGA Tour, the average amount of wrist extension in the trail hand is about between 35 to 45 degrees. And in an amateur golfer, it's only about 10 to 15 degrees. And the lack of extension actually causes two different problems. So the first one is it keeps the club face too open. And the second one is it doesn't get the club head behind our hands enough. So we know that nearly every single tour player as they swing down, the club head trails behind the hands, whether they hit a draw or a fade into delivery. And amateur golfers who don't have any wrist extension are never gonna get the club head behind the hands. The club head's gonna come out early and that's when we get that weak, open face, high cutty, fade or slice. It's really important that as an amateur golfer, we, you, that you start to understand that you need to flex your trail hand more on the way back or even at the top, it doesn't really matter where you do it, but it's important that we work on less of this and more of this, because this is, is what gives us lag, It what allows the club head to come into the ball behind our hands and it allows us to shut the face. You can see very clearly that if I go from extended trail hand to flat trail hand, the club face opens and the club head moves wildly outside. And from here, I'm really gonna struggle to hit with any sort of power. So I think it's fair to say that amateur golfers who slice all have too much wrist cock, not enough wrist extension and flexion. Um, but the third thing we need to talk about is rotation. This again is something that's gonna help us produce speed. That rotation of the wrist is not a bad thing. You've seen that in the modern era, people like DJ, Kepka, Morikawa, they've all got that mega hands forward, almost like blocky sort of release. And you would argue that they don't have any rotation, but so for the amateur golfers or just even the normal people, it's basically impossible for us to be strong enough to be able to muscle it forwards, hit it with an appropriate speed without ever releasing the club like they do. We're just not that good of an athlete generally. We have to be able to release the club and we can't ignore that this is not a massive power producer. This gives us more club head speed. Yes, it's gonna maybe 
add a tiny bit more open to close face rotation but it is going to help us get the face more closed it's going to give us more speed and ultimately help us hit it further so this is a big part of our release and it's a big part of our wrist action throughout the swing so teaching amateur golfers day to day as i do the general thing that i'm working on with players is trying to get that right wrist to extend more and earlier because the earlier people tend to do it the more likely they are to hold it. I found that golfers who try and get their wrist into extension at the top of the swing often just won't do it or definitely don't do it enough. So I'm always encouraging most golfers to try and extend that wrist as early as possible. And you can see that that gets the club face to look down, gets my left wrist to bow a little bit, and then that's just set me in a good position that where I'm gonna be able to swing up and hit it with power. So once I've got a golfer doing that, if they're still not drawing the ball, then I, that's when I'm then gonna get them to work on, right, let's add some rotation into the hands. Let's get the trail hand passing the lead hand. Let's get that face to turn over a bit sooner throughout the, the follow through. And let's see if we can get the ball going left that way. So what I want to see is a golfer's trail wrist loading early in the swing, almost to like full load by halfway back. And then almost we're trying to like hang on to that angle as much as we can and then let the hands release through and i'm pretty much always going to get a draw doing that because i've i've set my wrist the club face is square to closed and as i swing down if i feel that rotation the face is going from square to close to closed and that's going to get the ball starting further left i'm never going to fade it i'm never going to slice it and i'm going to get the ball under much more control if you're a closed face player and you need to hit the ball higher Adding more wrist cock is an okay idea. It's an okay thing to do. So that gets the face more open. You can sort of see that the toe's pointing down out the top. And that's gonna allow me to deliver more loft, hit the ball a bit higher, maybe even with a fade. Yeah, definitely higher with a fade. So you can do either of these two drills where you cock it up, turn and hit it. And that's gonna be your, I'm a low hooker and I need more height drill or I'm gonna do my, I'm just gonna load it back, massive extension, turn and hit it, and that's gonna help me hit the ball lower and draw it. So doing one of those two drills, depending on what your sort of ball flight and preference is, is gonna help you straighten out your flight and, and hit better golf shots. So we're gonna cock up, turn and hit it for height. Load, turn and hit it for draw, low draws. Yeah, well, straight left, probably too much, but you get the idea. If you can just work on those two things and understand that you might need a bit more rotation at the bottom just to help square the face up, you're definitely gonna hit the ball a bit further, definitely gonna have more control over your initial start direction and your curve, and I've no doubt that that will ultimately lead to lower scores. Thanks very much for watching the videos. If you can please like and comment to boost the engagement and subscribe if you don't already, that'd be great. If you like what I put out in these videos, you like what I say about technique, I can actually help you with your game no matter where you are in the world. So if you just wanna click the link in the bio, it'll take you to Skillist, which is an online coaching platform. And there you can look to see what I do and actually I can help you with your game, so analyze your swing, give you some drills and tips to help you improve so we can work together to help you lower your handicap.